This is our second example from section 3.6. Um, it really is like a part one, part two, and part three, even though I've labeled it examples two, or examples one, okay? So what we're gonna do is follow those same directions as before. So step one is to find my domain. Um, when you're talking about a cube root, because that's what this is, it's the cube root of x squared. The domain of a cube root is all real numbers and the domain of a linear function is all real numbers. So my domain here is also going to be all real numbers. So I don't have any restrictions on my domain. Okay, now I need to find my y-intercept and that I can find by plugging in zero. And zero raised to any power is still zero. And any number times zero is going to be zero. So I get the point zero, zero as my y-intercept. Well, then that means that my x-intercept is probably also going to be zero, zero. But let's try to find our x-intercepts because um, we may have more than just that one. So we set the whole function equal to zero. Now, in order for me to solve this, um, I can factor an x out. But if I do that, um, I have to subtract one from this power, which would give me x to the negative one third. So that when I distribute this again, x times x to the one third, one minus one third is going to give me two thirds. Then this factor will give me that x value of zero like we saw here, but this factor does need to be solved, okay? So this is really like six over x to the one third. And if I add four over, I get four. And if I multiply both sides by x to the one, four, one third, I get this. See here it would cancel. And here it would just end up sticking. Then I can divide both sides by four, which will reduce to three halves on this side. And then if I want to get rid of the third power, I would have to cube both sides. So it would end up with 27 over 4 equal to x. So I have another x-intercept at this number here. So that means I have two of them, one at 0, 0, and one at 27 over 4, comma 0. Now 27 over 4 is about 6.75, just so I know where in my graph to draw that point. Okay, so then now I need to talk about vertical asymptotes. Well, there's no denominator in my original function, so I don't need to worry about vertical asymptotes. There's no vertical asymptotes. <coughs> now my horizontal asymptotes, I need to take the limit as x goes to infinity of my function and then I need to do the same for pot for negative infinity but here since you have x to a power this is just going to go to infinity and this is going to go to infinity there's no denominator um, to reduce this so you end up with infinity minus infinity which you don't know what that's going to be because you don't know which infinity is bigger it could be positive infinity or it could be negative infinity, we're not exactly sure, but it's not an actual value like five or zero or one, etc. So, <coughs> excuse me, there's no horizontal asymptote coming from this limit. Now we have to do the other limit as x goes to negative infinity but it's going to be the same case. This is going to this is going to go to negative infinity. So you end up with negative infinity plus infinity, but we don't know which one is larger. So we don't know what we're going to end up with, but it will be plus or minus infinity and not a, a specific y value. Therefore, there are no horizontal asymptotes. And since we do not have a fraction here, um, we don't have a slant asymptote either.
So we can move on and start taking the derivatives. So the first derivative is going to be 6 times 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third minus 4, which is 4x to the negative 1 third minus 4, 4 over x to the 1 third minus 4. And if I want to make this one big fat fraction, I would have 4 minus x to the, or I'm sorry, 4x to the 1 third over x to the 1 third. So I've got to set my numerator equal to 0, and I've got to set my denominator equal to 0. So here I'm going to move over the 4, subtract 4 on both sides. I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. Then I'm going to cube both sides. Here I'm going to cube both sides and I end up with 0. So I have two critical numbers so far, both of which are in my domain. Now um, let's break up our number line. So I have um, like negative 1, I could use a half, 0.5, and a 2. So I'm going to plug these into um, here. I don't want to use 2 because 2 is not a perfect cube and with the 1 third power I want a perfect cube. So I'm going to try 8. 8 is a perfect cube bigger than 1. So when I plug in negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Times negative 4 is positive 4. And the cube root of negative 1 again is negative 1. So this would be a negative 8, which means this is going to be decreasing, right? Now, if I plug in a half, actually I don't want to use a half because again, that's not a perfect cube. Let's try 1 8. The cube root of 1 8 is 1 half. And negative 4 times half is negative 2. And down in the bottom, I have 1 half because the cube root of 1 8 is 1 half. So this is really 2 times 2, which equals 4. It's a positive, which means in this section, we're increasing. Now when I plug in 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. So I end up with negative 4 over 2, which is a negative, and that means this section is decreasing. So if I'm decreasing to the left of 0, increasing to the right of 0, that means that there's a relative min at x equals 0. And if I want to know what the y value is, remember we already plugged in 0 for x, and we got 0 for y. Here this is increasing at 1 and then decreasing, which means there's a relative max at x equals 1. And if you want to know the y value, plug in 1 up here. 1 to any power is 1 times 6 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4, so you end up with 6 minus 4, which is 2. Now we do need some more um, space to keep going, so we're going to do our second derivative on this page. So remember, we're taking our second derivative. I like to use this version to take the second derivative, but I will eventually need to get a single fraction to find the critical numbers, just like I did on this problem. So let's take this here. I'm gonna derivative is gonna be negative one third x to the negative four thirds minus the derivative of four is just zero. So this ends up being negative four thirds x to the negative four thirds or negative four over three x to the four thirds. So the numerator can never equal zero. So no critical numbers from the numerator. And the denominator can equal zero. If I divide both sides by three, I get zero still. If I cube both sides, like raise it to the third power, those will cancel, I'll get x to the fourth equals still to zero. And if I take the fourth root of both sides, I still end up with x equal to zero, okay? So my only critical number for my second derivative is zero. So I'm going to pick a number to the left and pick a number to the right, and I'm going to plug them into my second derivative. So if I'm doing the negative, cube root of a negative 1 is negative 1. But negative 1 raised to the fourth power is a positive 1. So I have a negative 4 over a positive 3, which gives me a negative 4 thirds. Now I'm going to do f double prime of positive 1. 
cube root of positive 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 raised to the fourth power is positive 1 times 3 is positive 3, so I still end up with a negative 4 thirds. So that means on both sides of 0, I'm concave down. Okay. <clears throat> so then let's go ahead and um, try to put all of our information together. So remember... So let's see here, if I draw a graph, and I have, um, I have a y-intercept of 0, 0, and I have an x-intercept of 27 over 4 here, then we have a relative min here, and we have a relative max at 1 and 2, so about right there. Um, this might be, might should probably be a little bit higher, but we'll see. So if this is a relative min, um, then it should be going, and to the right of 1, we have that it's concave down. So it should be going like this, okay? But since this is a minimum, it means that this has to go up. However, it says to the left of zero, it's also concave down, which means it probably looks like that, okay? So it is going down, but it's not going down enough that it's gonna end up coming all the way back to give you another x-intercept, okay? That, or it's a very straight line because I believe if you curve it like that, it will eventually go um, back down, eventually. I mean, way, way out there into infinity. But if you have a straight line, because it has a negative slope, it still could be considered to have a negative concavity. However, if it's straight, you know it'll never come back down, ever, okay? Um, so let's confirm with our graph to see if um, this is what it looks like. So remember our function, it's 6x raised to the 2 thirds, get down, minus 4x. Let's see what it looks like. Yes, it does look like that. It looks like it's going like this. It may have a slight, slight curve to it, but then it has this little drop down like we do here, okay? So you could give this a slight curve or you could not. Um, either way, it's still going to be the correct um, sketch. Remember, we're not trying to draw it exactly. We're just trying to give it a good sketch. So you can kind of curve that a little bit so that it's concave downward, right? But that's it for this one.